Hey everyone, I'm Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Warburg, and this is the 33rd episode of the Mr. Warburg Show. Got an awesome thing lined up for you tonight because I just went and watched Star Trek. And Star Trek has been long one of my favorite uh, just kind of properties in general. It's one of the first movies I remember watching, first series I remember watching on TV. In particular, uh, there was an episode of Voyager where one ensign, like came back from the dead and the doctor had to figure out how his memories were altered and then the like the ensign turned like into a blue alien and it freaked me the shit out like i spat out my green apple and looked at my dad like what the hell and then of course the movies first one that i remember actually like tearing up and like one of my all-time favorite movies is star trek 2 wrath of khan and i wouldn't have got into star trek star wars indiana jones a lot of nerdy stuff that's you know cult classics today uh, or not even cult classics, just classics today because of my dad. So with that in mind, given his birthday was a couple weeks ago and I only got him like a $6 copy of First Contact, which is still an awesome movie, I bought him a ticket to the new Star Trek, and now he's going to help me review it. So, Dad, you can enter. Here's your mic. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, hi, this is my dad. This is Kent. Hello. So, obviously, you've been a huge, a long, far longer stand fan of star trek than myself so what do you think of these new movies i'm not as big a nerd as you i know you're not as big a nerd i mean i'm wearing a you mass effect it. shirt you get into it more yeah, than i do i'm very passionate about it but what do you think of this new movie as uh, in comparison to the other two movies as well so start with your impressions of this movie well i kept the characterization going between the Let me turn you up yeah between the three of them with uh especially with mccoy and spock true uh, they just kept it, continued the the friendship. Oh yeah, that that was that's my favorite part. You can look at the camera. And the too. special effects were awesome. Oh yeah, they're all, they've been awesome the entire time. J.J. Abrams, he knows how to. Well, in the first two, that was him. This was Justin Lin, who still knows how to do effects right. work because his Fast and Furious movies are fantastic. Um, so obviously you're a core, you're a core guy. Well, I you're you're a prime timeline guy because it's what you grew up watching. Yeah, but same with, here, with, but. With uh, William Shatner and oh, yeah. Nimoy and all them, yeah. He's an he's an old school guy. Yeah. I'm gonna turn I you still, up a little more. I still have a hard time with the parallel universe, but eh, I still it is what it is. Fiction. Yeah, is your mic on? Okay, yeah. I'm just making sure his mic's on. Yeah. Looking at Audacity, and it's it's pretty quiet, but I'll I'll fix it in post. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned, and I know we were talking about this before the movie too, much like myself, your for your favorite Star Trek movie is Wrath of Khan. It is the best one. The Colonel Montalban was it is awesome. Awesome. And Spock's funeral and everything like oh, that. Yeah. The whole thing was like, ah, oh, hit you right in the feels. Um, so, I guess I was going to say, what do you think of the, the – there's a, some, some kind of spoilery stuff we're going to talk about here for a second. What do you think of the villain? Because I didn't see that like coming at all. No. No. no like, they didn't hint that at all, which was kind of – it kind of means it comes out of nowhere. Uh, the villain turns out to be a kind of historical player in the Star Trek universe. But, and you, but you know there had to be something when they found the old ship. There had to be a reason why a it was there so. and not destroyed like everything else. Right. It just crashed. Right. So, you know, that that was kind of interesting. And they were, I think, playing a little fast and loose with the NX lore. Um, but, you know, that was never fully fleshed out on the show even. Um, so comparing... Where do you rank this one in, like, all of the Star Trek movies? Like, all of them. What do you rank this one? That would be the top three. Top three? That's some high praise, because this man, he likes his prime timeline stuff. So, what's your what's your number two if Wrath of Khan's your first? I'm going to guess First Contact. Yeah, that was pretty Yeah, cool. I love First Contact. It introduced me to Steppenwolf, and I love that scene. Uh, Born to be Wild. Ah, oh, awesome stuff. Um, so, for me, uh, more, like review type stuff. Um, it was just a ton of fun. It felt very classic Trek. It was very well written. Uh, you can tell Simon Pegg definitely had his fingerprints on this property, being the huge Star Trek nerd that he is. Uh, the action was awesome. I love the score that they have for these new movies. I love that, like, soaring opening and how they intersperse it throughout the movies. It's awesome. And the like you said, the special effects were fantastic. And the way the enemy ships moved and, like, operated, felt it felt some, like something straight out of Star Trek. I want to say uh, the Jem Hadar, I think is how you say it. It felt like that, but a different species that wasn't what I was thinking. Uh, and the NX ship, I love that ship design. It is such a cool ship. Still wish they would have gone with, like, the NX, like, 04 or 05, one we never even saw in Enterprise, and, like, made it part of, like, the first for, for Warp 5 class. So it would have been that ship design, because that is, I think, one of the coolest Star Trek ship designs. I love that NX series. 
that they had on Enterprise. It was pretty awesome. But it's getting really, really hot in this room. Really, really fast. Amen. So Amen. was it worth your time? Because it was my money. Yeah. He bought it. So it was good. It was yep. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I had a heck, heck of a time. Paid, you know, 11 bucks for the ticket. Definitely probably going to go see it again. Because I got to go see it with Chris and get his review on it, too. And, oh, it was a ton of fun. And I really think they're taking these these movies. They're starting to feel more like Trek now. And they can continue the success this one had. And, like, be making it a more... You know, away from Earth and like actual exploring stuff and the conflicts that that you know inherently brings, it's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm pretty excited for four. So, yeah, that's the our you know quick and dirty thoughts on Star Trek Beyond. Huge thanks to my dad Kent for dropping well, by the thank show, you for taking me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Definitely, we should do it again sometime. Okay. Um, yeah, drop a like, you know, share the video, stuff like that. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next week.